Hey everyone, welcome back. Well, today's video has been much requested and it's one of those I just keep taking notes on and kind of putting it off to do because um, these videos that are very heavily like opinionated, I don't know, I just feel like I always hesitate to do them because um, everybody definitely has their opinion about their favorite cruise lines and all that. Um, but I'm gonna kind of break it down that will maybe be helpful to you. I get a lot of questions. What's my favorite cruise line? What do you recommend? So I thought I'd break it down into categories, kind of like this is the best for food, you know, of course, in my opinion, um, best for families, best, you know, things that I like about each cruise line, things like that. So that will maybe help you a little better. These are questions I ask people when I get emails. There's so many variables when it comes to picking a cruise line. For those of you that don't know, my husband and I have cruised well over 20 sometimes now, we've kind of lost count. And we've cruised several times within each line and on several different size ships. I always like to say that because I think it matters so much because you can cruise like 15 times with one cruise line and you think you know everything about cruising and oh I really love this line but if you cruise on a different size of ship or a different itinerary with that cruise line you may get a whole different perspective so because I know for us sometimes it totally changes our opinion sometimes and our cruise experience depending on the size of ship, did we like the ship, oh, we liked this ship better. So you may like a cruise line in general um, on, and how they do things, but certain ships can totally change your experience, we found. So again, hopefully you find this helpful. I'm gonna start out with um, the best cruise line for families because I think that's most of the people that are cruising. Of course, there's couples cruising and older people cruising, but most people cruise with families, whether that's you and your small kids, whether it's your extended family. And I just wanna to touch on that. That's always a great point. I feel like with an extended family, you could say there's like 10 of you going on a cruise and you'll all have a different experience, you know, which is kind of great because you're all in the same ship, but depending on what you do and how you like to cruise, you can all have like a totally different experience, which is good and catered kind of to each one of you. So the three big ones, aside from Disney, I'm not gonna talk about Disney just because I feel like Disney's kind of almost like in a whole other category of their own. They definitely do things different. They're much higher price. If you're not familiar, they are literally about three to four times the price of other cruise lines. Not saying you might not get three to four times the service or food or what have you, but I'm just gonna leave them out of the conversation for now. So best for families, I would definitely say you have Carnival, Norwegian, and Royal Caribbean. If you want more budget friendly, I would definitely go with Carnival. Um, Norwegian and Royal Caribbean are probably going to be more similarly priced and are definitely going to be higher priced most of the time than Carnival. All three are great for kids, families, there's a wide variety to do. Almost every cruise line now has a kids club, so obviously your kids can go there and have a great time. All three of those ships have um, a lot of pool activities like water slides and things like that. Um, some of the newer Royal Caribbeans have water slides. They didn't always used to, but some of their bigger um, ships, they are adding slides. Of course, Norwegian's known for their different kind of slides. And then Carnival also has like a lot of cool water slides, pool things, things like that. So things to keep the kids entertained during the day while you're at sea. For itineraries, um, my husband and I personally like Princess and Holland America. We have found they either go to smaller little islands that not a lot of the main lines go to, just their itineraries in general. Now, of course, sometimes this changes from season to season for a cruise line. So for instance, we're looking for a specific one that Princess has had year after year. And of course, now the time we're wanting to go, they don't have that exact one we're wanting. So we're kind of having to push that off for a while. But for instance, like, you know, Holland America goes to Half Moon Cay, which a lot of you know, that is my absolute favorite private island. It's in the Bahamas, it's gorgeous. Carnival does go there well, as well because Holland is under the Carnival umbrella, um, but it's mainly known as a Holland um, private island. But again, Carnival does go there sometimes. We'd actually stopped cruising with Royal Caribbean, not by choice really, it's just every time they came up in the mix of places and itineraries we wanted to go, they just seemed like they kept having the same itinerary over and over and over. They're going to these same stops, um, they don't vary much like at all. Um, they don't, you know, and it just seemed like it was boring. We've been there, done that. 
Um, so that's just one of the reasons people would ask me about Royal Caribbean. We haven't cruised with them in several years. So for food, my top are definitely Princess Holland and Celebrity. So if you're a foodie, you like good food, um, definitely those three I think have the best food in the dining room and the buffet. Depending on the size of ship with Princess, I feel like the buffets are better than others. Like for instance, on their Royal class ships, I love the buffet set out, um, or just the setup I mean, and the variety. If you're a dessert person, <laughs> definitely Princess has, you know, a lot of great desserts and out all times during the day, which is great. Um, Holland, I don't love their setup. You guys have heard me say in the buffet where, um, you know, they are serving you. Now, I know on some of their larger ships, we're getting ready to go on their brand new one here soon. Um, it's set up a little bit different, so more stations. Of course, I haven't seen it in person yet, but the quality of food is great. So if you're looking at quality of food, those three definitely, hands down, are the best. Uh, another reason why we have not been on Royal in a while, because their itineraries were getting kind of boring to us, and their food. We know people that cruise Royal all the time, that are also top tier members with Royal, and it's the same thing. Their food has just gotten really boring, and you can pretty much dictate on this day, on this cruise, this is what you're gonna have. Now, a lot of cruise lines are like that, but you add in the quality and just the lack of variety, it's kind of just so-so. As far as service, I'm gonna have those three as well, but I'm also gonna add in Norwegian. We took our first Norwegian cruise um, a few months ago, and definitely their service was really great as well. So definitely, you know, Celebrity, Holland, Princess, we always find their service to be great, and definitely Norwegian, I feel like, has really great service. So if you're looking for like fun things to do and activities galore all the time, I would definitely say Royal Caribbean is really good at this. They have really good trivia, um, just a lot going on all the time. That's one place where I feel like um, Holland can be lacking sometimes. Princess is usually pretty good at it. I feel like they're always right in the middle. To me, Princess is one of those cruise lines that they kind of toe the line between fun and innovative and a different variety of ages and a crowd. Um, and then also that traditional cruise experience you're looking for. I also think Norwegian has a lot going on all the time. Um, so a lot of things to do. So if you're always like wanting that next thing to do, those two are really great. So now I'm just gonna kind of list my favorite things, some pros and cons maybe about each cruise line. So I definitely get asked what's your favorite cruise line. That changes over the years. If you would ask me several years ago, I'd have probably said Celebrity. Um, we kind of had a bad experience on one of our last ones, which kind of turned us off a little bit. Not that we are never cruising Celebrity again. It just so happens that we've cruised other lines and other itineraries have appealed to us more. So that's why we've just not been back on Celebrity. But Celebrity definitely has its pluses. I would highly still recommend them. Um, they're one of our favorites. The Princess definitely has taken over that top spot recently. We just find overall, as a whole cruise line. Now each cruise line, I've said this before, has its pros and cons and too bad you can't like fit all of them into the perfect cruise line, you know? But I would say overall, they are definitely our favorite just as far as ships, itineraries, food, service, things that are offered, just that all, you know, around, we really like them. So I just wrote some notes here, I'm glancing down. Um, the room size is really nice. We always get a balcony. I like the open closet um, on Princess. Now you either like that or you don't. I like it because it's off by itself. Sure, you have to worry about maybe the bathroom door opening, but that hasn't been a problem for us. But I like it better than other cruise lines where maybe it's stuck like in a weird, thing sandwiched beside a bed and you can't really get in there and definitely both of you can't be in there at the same time. I just really like the room layout of Princess. Their food desserts, I already mentioned that, are great. I love the International Cafe. That is to me one of the best things about Princess. Just love the International Cafe. It is included um, in the cost so that's great except for the specialty coffees but they have um, 
desserts and snacks and small sandwiches and things throughout the day that are included. Again, I mentioned the itineraries are great. The movies under the stars, that's awesome. That's something great to do like at night or even during the day, like sea days. We notice anymore, we will um, be out there just hanging out on deck and usually around noon, they'll play a movie. And it's always something we haven't seen. So that's a great way just to catch a movie during the day as well. I think their reward program, their loyalty program, is better than most ships. Like you can jump up top tiers with them pretty quick. Now we have been on, I wanna say two 10 days with Princess. So that bumped us up pretty quick. You can get a pretty high tier pretty quickly cruising with them where others it's like, oh, you bump up to the first or the second and then there's like this big gap. You have to cruise quite a bit before you keep moving up. Royal Caribbean, I mentioned their trivia is great. So if you love that, their entertainment overall, their ships, the buffet, um, we really like. The food is not so great anymore. I feel like um, definitely lacking in itineraries. I mean, they've, to me, really got to step that up. And I don't like that you need to make a reservation for the open dining. And even though it's open dining, like, you know, every cruise line does this anymore. You just, you know, you can have fixed dining time or open dining, you know, my time dining, whatever the ship calls it, which we love. That's all we do. Um, you can just walk up, you know, sometimes you can have a reservation, which is great, especially on like four night when it might be busy. But I noticed Royal Caribbean, they would like you to make a reservation and they still set you in the same spot every night, which is weird. To me, that defeats the purpose of open seating. So, and I find the price sometimes to be slightly inflated for Royal Caribbean, not all the time and not all the ships, but once in a while I find I can get the same or better cruise for just as high end of the line. Like for instance, I'm thinking like they do that 50% off thing, like second passenger 50% off thing. I find that's usually not that great of a deal. It sounds like a good, of a good deal, but when you're looking at what you're paying, um, it's not. On America, the food, the itineraries, um, are great. It does have a little bit of an older crowd. Sometimes they're known for that. If you go on spring break though, I find it's a good mix and it's not too much of like a party crowd or something like that you might find on uh, like say Carnival. Um, the cleanliness is good, the open dining. It does have kind of lacking entertainment we find that time before dinner, like, you know, where we usually go to a bar or something, hang out, have a cocktail before dinner, you want to listen to music or something. We find there's not a lot going on at that time. Now, after dinner, there's, you know, all kinds of things and music and dueling pianos and whatever, but that time before dinner, it seems very quiet, you know, where I would like to have something a little livelier. The cabins are sometimes a little bit smaller. Now, on their larger ships, they're getting better. I find the layout of the larger ships to be much, much better. There, to me, is a huge difference between their kind of mid-sized ship and their larger ship as far as the cabin layout and just the overall ship. To me, when, between one of our haul in America and the last one we took, it was like night and day difference on our cruise experience just for the layout, what the ship offered, the cabin, all of that. Um, as far as carnival, like the Blue Iguana, Guy's Burgers, large staterooms, um, Alchemy Lounge, if it has that, those are all pluses to me. Like I said, every cruise line to me has its plus and minuses. There's a cruise out there for everyone, you know? And that's why I always encourage people to try new lines, see what you like, because that's how, you know, you learn. Hey, now this is our favorite. That's how we know what we like and we don't like. We've cruised a lot, we've cruised a lot with different lines. You know, it just takes that experience. If I did not answer your question, definitely leave me a comment below. Like I said, I get a lot of questions. I try to write notes on some of the most frequently, frequently asked questions. And I will definitely link um, other cruise videos, the playlist below. So hopefully those videos will answer some of your questions if I haven't. Let me know in the comment below what your favorite cruise line, what your next cruise is that you're going on. Like I said, as the time I'm filming this, our next one will be on Holland America, the new Staten Dom, Staten Dom. <laughs> you never know how they exactly pronounce it, but we are going on that. It's a brand new ship, uh, just as like a month or so old. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch and comment and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.